Well, hey everybody. Um, I'm here today with a, a good friend of mine. He's actually the proprietor of Parsons Woodcraft. Um, he makes custom um, wooden products. Um, it does some really cool work, but one of the reasons that I wanted to come over here today and have this uh, field trip with, with uh, Dan Parsons from Parsons Woodcraft was, <laughs> we were talking about a little bit off camera, um, how long we'd known each other. So um, I'd say we went to school together. And so we, we knew each other in the 90s, the 2000s, 2010, 2020. So we're in our fourth, fourth decade. decade. Whew. That's it's hard being, to believe. Of <laughs> being friends. <laughs> um, another cool thing is, um, is, is through our, uh, our time in high school, we were both very active in woodshop. In fact, my wife um, will sometimes say that I majored in woodshop in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and, Me too. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and every spare minute that we had that we weren't actually in an academic class, uh, you could find us down in the wood shop. And sometimes when I could talk my way out of another class. Yeah, if we weren't really that busy or <laughs> learning about something that was uh, kind of not that fun. But so we, we both had sort of a, a wood shop mentor. Um, his name was Mr. Ift. And uh, he was the last shop teacher at our school. Yeah. When a couple years after we graduated in the late 90s, they, uh, they actually ripped out the wood shop, metal shop. And... Uh, and, and turn it into, I think, a weight room, which is yeah. important. Weights were important, but I learned a ton so, of stuff. It's, it's still a sad thing to yeah. not have uh, a, a woods, metals, whatever shop, any kind of industrial arts um, in the building. It's um, every day, Scott, every day I use yeah. uh, a skill that Mr. Ifs taught me, you know, that I learned in that wood shop. And, um, you know, people talk about teachers that have impacted their lives yeah. and uh you know mr hift was one of those and you know it wasn't one of those where you know he sat you down and, and gave you a talk about the way life should be and the you know how to be a man no um he taught you not how not to cut your fingers off at the table saw yeah and how to um produce something from your brain something you know yeah. a, something from your mind yeah and if the process, as I remember, particularly for wood shop, was you could build anything you wanted. Um, it wasn't one of the shops that, uh, you know, you all built the same project, you all built the same wood, um, wooden birdhouse or the same this or that. We had freedom once we got past the, the first level freshman course. We had freedom in, in uh, advanced cabinetry to build whatever we wanted. Yeah, yeah. Um, guys built workbenches, um, guys, guys built all kinds of things. I built a lot of small furniture and shelves and and but the process was that you you had to design your project you had to estimate um cost the cost of material and then he would approve it and once approved you had the whole shop to at your disposal so we had all the tools we had the arm saw we had the band saw we had the planer joiner table saw other hand tools and you would build your project and you would finish it um typically with stain and then um, you would uh, be able to give it to Mr. Ift and he would take it back to the, the spray room and he would lacquer it um, and then you were done. Which was a whole a whole different consideration <laughs> that he taught us. Right. Um, which is the spray lacquer was dangerous yeah. and um, he was the only one with the respirator and knew how to use mm -hmm. it and sure. you know that's that's a consideration is sometimes you need to have proper training to do something safely. Yeah, and you know, a legacy that carries on with me is, is whether I use brush on lacquer or if I use the spray on lacquer that's available in a in a the rattle can. Right. I do that outside as much as I can. Yeah. Because, it's a, it's a potentially harm, harmful substance. But so then you would build your project, and then he would, um, you had to present it to him. He'd take the exact measurements of the as built. And then based off whether you used um, oak or poplar, which was your two main hardwood choices, right. you would pay for it off of the board foot. And he was always very generous, I think. <laughs> yeah, he really was. <laughs> his, his board foot estimating was, was spot on. <laughs> and then and it, he always kind of rounded down, yeah. which I appreciated. So, But the, that's kind of the legacy. And, and I would name some of the other folks that were in there with us, but I don't want to leave anybody out. So right. you know if you had Mr. Ift in... Uh, Chippewa High School, 
Um, he was there a long time. He's, of course, since retired. Um, we've been out of school long enough. But <laughs> long time. <laughs> anybody that taught us is basically retired, yeah. even if they started <laughs> when we were there. Right. Um, but I, I wanted to uh, to point out one of these uh, projects that, that Dan's got going right now. It's a, uh, it's a, to call it a bookcase is to say that a Cadillac's a car. <laughs> um, so I'm going to leave it to Dan to take it away and explain what we've got here and, and some of the, the thoughts and processes that he's used. Thanks. So, um, yeah, so this is, the reason this is here is this is the current project. Um, what I do is uh, I take projects and I work on them one at a time as they come in. So this was the next project to be done. Um, and it's not a bookcase and it's, it's in and is at the same time. Um, it's constructed as a bookcase, but this was a particular uh, challenge to build because um, the client did not want a back. So you can see here, um, there is no back on this unit. This is the front. Um, and anyone that works with wood or has built a bookcase knows that the back gives you a lot of strength to keep something from, from racking. So from once it's connected, you, you want it to stay square. You don't want it to move this way. So um, I had to come up with a plan on how to deal with that. And what I did was I, I uh, used a lot of traditional joinery. I used um, uh, dado uh, uh, connections for the shelves and then uh, a, a face frame that we usually use as a decorative piece. This one is structural and there's a, a complementing one on the back that is also structural. Um, this project's for a very good friend of mine that I've known not as long as I've known Scott but a long time. And so um, this project is made out of um, ambrosia maple that I was able to get um, at a discount and I'm able to pass that, that discount right on. Um, so there was no, no upcharge basically. And I'm very excited about that because um, it's a very sought after wood um, for fine woodworking. Um, so some of the features that, that may not show through on camera I would, I'll take close-ups if I can but there's some worms I mean that's the the <laughs> fact it sounds weird to say we got worms but uh <laughs> and it's not a bait shop yeah or a dumb and dumber <laughs> pet shop that's what it was yeah um but just to see this detail of, of the worms actually scarred the the material and, and rather than being a defect it's actually an accent and it's, it really is and, and what's the, uh, the stain color that you, you chose for this? Well, all my finishing projects, um, I come at from a multi-layered uh, thing. So this actually started with an aniline dye, which is a, a water-based dye. Um, so it soaks in and it really accents grain changes. And so uh, this started out with a, an antique maple aniline dye. Mm. Uh, two coats of that, um, after, actually a really light coat of that to raise the grain sanded it back um, and then two coats of that heavy aniline dye um, and then uh, it's got three coats of Danish oil um, a, a dark walnut Danish oil hmm. um, that further darkened and accented the grain um, and then we're right now we're finishing the top coat with just some water-based poly um, and I use water-based poly instead of lacquer um, hmm. lacquer is beautiful and I, I love the, the finish I use water-based poly because it has a very low VOC, so mm -hmm. I can use it in my shop and I don't need a respirator. Yeah. So so it's a multi-step process. So this yeah. didn't come right out of the can and get no. blasted on and No. Um, so I that to me that's something that I probably have a goal of needing to get to that way to get on that level. I typically use the the Minwax, you know, oil based and your finishing is, is far superior to mine. And I, I wish that there was a way to, to show just how the light catches the grain and how the, the complexities of the finish are really showing through in person. Um, it's, this is amazing. And, and to walk up to this case, I, I knew about it. I didn't understand the, the backless feature and the challenges, frankly, that that, I never thought about it that way. So to see that, how the challenges were met of, of the customer's request. And to me, you know, custom furniture, um, to Dan's point, it can be very expensive. Um, 
but there are ways you know that a skilled woodworker can deliver what the customer requests and and look for ways to make it economical and you know this is 2020 <laughs> my uh attention span can get kind of short so <laughs> um i i love uh when someone comes to me and says i want something you've never done before or i want something like this um i i love the fact that every project i do is different mm. and um it's a lot of fun to have someone say i thought of this and then you know a couple of weeks later i hand it to them yeah. in person and um it's a lot it, it's a really gratifying experience yeah and nothing against the production shops you know that no, whether they're small scale or large scale but to me part of the beauty of, of woodworking is that challenge of I need to figure this out or I need to use this method or, or tactic that I've never used before um, absolutely and, and I, I do get that that uh, you know gold they say a goldfish forgets every time it blinks I, <laughs> I've got a little bit of that myself and so to, to pick stuff up and, and, and do something I've never done before is a, it's a pretty neat thing for me uh, Dan is this is this the stock that this yes it is case started out with yeah so it's it started out with oh, oh crap sorry. sorry about that we can fix it sorry about that so I you've got a, a bigger piece and I've got a smaller piece here this is a really rough cut uh, five quarter hmm. um, ambrosia maple the ambrosia um, is different from spalted you've maybe heard of spalted maple the ambrosia maple um, you get these color streak in here these these varying color streaks in this wood and yeah and is this a wormhole that is a wormhole is that what i'm looking at there and what that comes from is uh after the log has uh, died or been cut um some kind of wood boring worm gets into the log and it actually in its guts carries um, a fungus with it mm. of all oddities and that fungus colors the wood yeah but only in the areas the worms have touched and so you get this really amazing and dramatic um, spalting. I mean, this is this is spalting. Spalted's different in that the fungus gets in there on its own and there's no wormholes. But this spalting is just absolutely amazing. Um, as you uh, work it down, these colors come out in dramatic fashion and you can have whites and blacks and reds and greens. Mm tans, uh, all sorts of, of really interesting colors naturally occurring in the wood. Yeah, that's fascinating. So this case, and I'm going to take some other still pictures of it and try to highlight that, that grain texture that we're talking about with the richness and the finish and the grain. And But uh, I know there's some other things that you build too, um, Yeah, you know, custom orders and, and other things. So um, what's this we got here? So what we have here is a um, custom cutting board uh, that is a mix of exotic and native hardwoods. Um, what's cool about this is everything that went into this was sustainably farmed or harvested. Um, and I say that because I'm able to use things like mahogany and um, acacia and uh, epal, epal. Where's that from? Um, well, these were all, these all come from the Philippines. Okay. So, uh, I use, um, a wood seller that has, um, a plantation in the Philippines that grows all their hardwood. So since this wood is all grown to be timbered, it's, uh, legal mm -hmm. and sustainable. And they are the only importer in the country that is allowed to bring in mahogany. Honduran mahogany specifically, which is the original mahogany, uh, because they grow it. And, you know, they 30 something years ago, they thought ahead and planted this and they're able to bring it in. And so I'm able to offer these um, beautiful woods that you can't get legally anywhere else. Hmm. And so for this being a cutting board, um, obviously there's going to be food on there. Right. It can be a decoration. I mean, this, this is fine enough to sit on any shelf. In any uh, building that I've ever been in, right. uh, probably a few that I'm not even welcome <laughs> in. But so, what what do we need to do to make this food safe, um, fit for use? Right. So um, all of all of my cutting boards that I make, um, I try to um, make something that is beautiful enough to display, 
but they're all built to use mm -hmm. and, and be abused, to be honest with you. So the um, initial finish that I put on these is a mixture of food grade mineral spirits mm -hmm. and organic beeswax mm -hmm. that um, is an excellent, excellent finish for um, uh, food safe surfaces. And um, as long as they are washed, hand washed with soap and water, mm -hmm. um, dried off immediately, that finish will last for many uses and then is very easy to top up. Mm. Um, and actually just to find in your big box stores, mm. you can find a, a butcher block oil. Butcher block oil, yeah, I've heard of that. And um, it's real easy to upkeep and the wood soaks in the oil so well that um, you, uh, there's a misconception out there that wood cutting boards um, aren't really food safe from mm. a bacterial standpoint. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact of the matter is that's not true. Okay. Um, the wood grain is very tight, very hard, and the oil finishes off any openings that yeah. that weren't covered to begin with. So, um, yeah, I get to produce these beautiful, beautiful boards yeah. that are absolutely meant to be used. Great. Yeah, and to me, that's it's it's one thing to have something for display and an heirloom, but there's something entirely different to me when you build something to be used. And you have both form and function, right? Um, particularly with the cutting board, obviously with the case here. Thank you. Um, so I know this is just a small sample of what, what you can do, and I'm going to link Parsons Woodcraft, um, their information, uh, Facebook page, and contact info. Um, like a lot of guys, like me, <laughs> <laughs> like we don't do this for a living. No. Um, so we're very selective sometimes with the projects we take on, and that's at least for me, and I think is the same is true for Dan, it's, it's not that I don't want to do your project. It's that I am not able to deliver your project in the time yeah. that I think is reasonable. So, um, you know, we, we have um, a lot of times we know other people that may be able to do that. Maybe they've got a different shop set up. Right. Um, you know, Dan's out here in his garage. I'm in my basement for now. I'm moving to the barn someday. Um, <laughs> But we're just a couple guys that we we picked this up you know had a basically at our age now you could say this is a lifelong love of yeah, woodworking yeah interestingly enough you know it i did i would say i learned to be a woodworker in high school mm -hmm. i i could hammer boards and and you know run a circular saw before that but right as far as appreciating the craft and understanding the process of idea to design to estimation to implementation to finish, we learned that all probably, um, safe to say we learned that from Mr. Ift in, yeah. in our four years at uh, Chippewa High School. So I hope that um, this kind of serves as a encouragement for you that yeah. start where you're at. You say, I don't have money for a nice table saw. That's fine. Find the table saw that works for you. Um, you know, it may be a contractor grade table saw and it might be a little bit more challenging to make that straight cut right. on that long board. Um, it yeah. might be a job site saw. It might I, be a job. I started out with, with yeah. two job site table saws. Yeah. And I used them so much I burned one of them up. Yeah. So. And for me, you know, I, I'm in a kind of a cycle of I buy what I can afford and I use it. Yeah. And if it breaks or wears out, then I say, okay, this is where I need to focus on getting a nicer tool because it's obvious I use this tool a lot. Right. Um, so buy the best you can afford. Don't be afraid to um, go to your buddy's house or a friend of a friend's house that's got a good quality uh, tool that you don't have. Right. And, and uh, you know, we all work together. Um, none of us are independently wealthy. No. <laughs> <laughs> if we were, um, you know, we'd have our dream shop and it would look, uh, it looked a lot different than what we're doing. But um, yeah, start with what you can, do with what you, you got. You know, um, I'm a big fan of the Habitat for Humanity Restore as far as... Good cause, too. Good cause, for one. Uh, secondarily, materials at a very steep discount and occasionally tools, too. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I just want to say uh, thanks, Dan. Um, been long overdue to get back out it's here and catch while, up. Yeah. Um, but I, I've, I've seen what you've been doing. Um, you know, I've seen the pictures and stuff. And to, to actually come out here and, and get to spend some time in your workshop and... Um, was neat, good to catch up, and uh, this, this, one. this was a lot of fun even with the camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I just want to say, man, you're welcome anytime. Yeah.
Awesome. Well, thanks for watching. If you got a, a request for uh, Parsons Woodcraft or you got a question for me or Dan, um, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I'll, I'll link his contact information in the uh, video description. Other than that, thanks for watching. We hope you found this useful. Bye, everybody.